Um, so um, Belgium played against um, Portugal, and it was a very closely fought game, you know, and I think it was very tight. And I think the game actually went to how I predicted, which is it was very, very, very close. And, you know, when games are this close, you know, all that needs to happen is just, you know, that one clear chance. Because I thought it would be very immature of me if I brought out the bottles and started saying so. Because, you know, it's not. I need to be a lot more professional. And I think that for this channel to grow and for me to get more subscribers and so forth, I need to be a lot more respectful to both sides and, 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 and both teams. So me taking a bottle and saying pop those bottles, I think it's very immature. So guys are wanting me to pop bottles and to celebrate. I'm sorry. I've gone past that and so forth. So all I'll have to say is we're going to pop those bottles down. We're going to pop those bottles down. We're going to pop those bottles down to talk. Pop those bottles down. We're going to pop those bottles down. Christina, pop those bottles down. We're going to pop those bottles down. Depending champs, pop those bottles down. We're going to pop those bottles down. Sad lives, pop those bottles down. We're going to pop those bottles down. We're going to pop, pop those bottles down. We're gonna pop those bottles down. We're gonna pop, pop, pop those bottles down. We're gonna 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 pop, 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 pop. Kid, 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 kid. This drink, this drink is dedicated to one man. This drink is dedicated to one man. Before I even mention his name, we need to have a discussion about who this man is. Right at the top. And guys, what do, guys, if you don't have a drink with you, get off my stream. I'm, I'm telling you right now, get off my stream and unsubscribe. If you don't have a drink with you, I don't care what drink it is. Go out and get a freaking drink. If you don't have a drink on you, unsubscribe, get off my damn stream. Anybody on this stream, we're drinking. This is dedicated to a guy. A guy who I, I never took seriously. I called him the fake hazard. I called him the side chick. I called him the side piece. I referred to him as just some dude from the road. Just some dude from the road. That's what I referred to him as. He's just a mere dude from the road. I never took him seriously. I said, look, he's just he's just there to be. He's Eden Hazard's brother. He's Eden Hazard's brother. That is the beginning and end of him. Okay, sure, he scored a goal against Denmark. Okay, cool. What's that? Give me his moments. I told you guys, see, anybody who knows me, I'm a moments merchant. I don't care about consistency. Consistency is overrated. Consistency are for losers. Consistency are for losers. I live off the moments. That's what I speak. If anybody would say, what do you remember HH4? Remember HH4, one thing. He's a moments merchant. Ask anybody in the streets. They say, well, who's HH? He loves the moments. I don't care about your damn concerns. When money time comes, who shows up? Who shows up for money time? Because if you show up in money time, that is how I respect you. The man for the moment. The critical man. Dodd. Decree of difficulty. Because this game was Dodd. This game was Dodd. Game was tight. Belgium couldn't buy a chance. Portugal were looking good. They're looking good. I was like, you know what? This is going to plan. Belgium can't break these guys down. Luke Skywalker and Tony to Tims. I'm going to get on to Larasco. <laughs> guys, I told you. I'm getting on to Larasco. I'm saving Larasco because I'm 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 getting on to Larasco. I'm also going to get I'm going to get on to um Leo Go lots as well. So there are a lot of L's. So guys, we're going to we're going to talk. We're, we're going to talk. But this drink is dedicated to a guy who you're no longer Eden Hazard's brother. 
You are no longer the fake hazard. You see, whenever you get a nickname, things change. People look at you different. You see, you walk with a swear. You know, see, whenever you get a nickname, the way you walk into the club like this, you see, if without a nickname, you walk like this, you know, like, you know, on the, when you have a nickname, there's a bit more flow, you know, the, you know, get the shoulder move, the shoulder moves a little bit, a bit like this, you know, you go like, yo, okay, right, what up, what up? You're no longer, you're no longer called Eden Hazard's brother. You are no longer called the fake hazard. You're no longer called the sideman. Henceforth, he will be known as the talk. Henceforth, you are known for the talk. So, talk, this is for you. Because that right there is a contender for goal of the tournament. Because that is what you call a Popeye the Sailor Man spinach. Huge goal, massive goal. And with that, Torg, tier two, tier two. The papers are, I'm, I'm making, I'm, I'm signing the doc. And I'm sending this in right now, tier two. I'll make a phone call. Crack! Tonight, I need to process papers. Right now. I don't care whether you're sleeping. I need to protest papers right now before 9 a.m. Sharp tomorrow. Tog and Hazard, a.k.a. the Tog, I need him bumped up to tier two. And I need that done latest 9 a.m. Sharp tomorrow morning. He's officially tier two. It's done. Crack is going to walk in. By tomorrow, the ranks will be updated. Tog, you're tier two. You're tier two. That was a G. That was a GC. That is what I call moments. Seize the moments, carpe diem, carpe diem, carpe diem. It's the winning goal. That, for that to be winning goal, ooh, so you, it's different. It's different because, see, for so long, because I told you guys, I'm the baby of my family. I am the youngest brother because I've got two big brothers and a big sister. I'm the baby. And for so long, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I was as, as the younger dude. I was like, I always followed my big sister. I always followed my big brothers. Everything my big brother and my big sister did, I, I followed. But there came a time when I said, no, I have to have agency. I can't keep on following. They say, oh, my, what's big brother going to do? What's big sister going to do? I have to take agency. Baby Hazard grew some balls. Baby Hazard's balls dropped tonight. Yesterday, you were a child. You were a fetus. You were an, you were an umbilical cord merchant. You were a prenatal engineered IVF merchant. Right now, you're a man. You can grow hair. You can pay bills. You can drive the vehicle. You can have a mansion. You can have five wives. That's what I'm saying. You've changed. I'm looking. The way you talk about talk is different. From henceforth, from henceforth, the way we address the talk is different. It's different. Because it showed up with a big G. With a massive G. Um, Eden Hazard. A lot of people want, want to hate on a boy. And I get it. And I think I was afraid of the, of the narrative. Because the narrative would have been, oh, he shows him up and Hazard is useless. Watch the tape. Go and look away at the garden of of Eden. <laughs> see, 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 wherever I talk, listen. I know football. I know bowlers. I know guys. Look at what the garden of Eden did in that second half. Look at how he was playing. His the tosh, the technique, the movement, the ball control. They fouled every single time. Every single time those hands, I've never seen a guy foul that much before in my life. I've never seen a guy foul that much ever before in my life. He would say, what's up? Your boy said, what's up? The hazards lived. The hazards lived. They lived. Cristiano. Cristiano, I'm coming for you, bro. I saw you try to win that penalty. I saw you. What? 
I told you guys, I'm doing this for the sake of football. I'm doing this for football integrity. You cannot have a man penalty his way to a golden boot. You can't have it. It's impossible. You see, I saw the dive. I saw him trying to dive to win a penalty. That's what this guy was trying to do. And look, granted, he played well. He did his thing. But this is where Penaldo ends. This is where... And that is why we call him the talk. Because the talk slayed the giant. The, the, the talk slayed the disease. The disease and the plague known as Penaldo. Because I was afraid of football integrity. The footballing universe was at stake. The balance of football was at stake because if this man would have penaltied and tapped his way to a Euros, it would have been crazy. And guys, the narrative lives. The narrative lives because I still have it on Twitter. I told you, real deal, where are you? Real deal, I want you in that live chat. Real deal, I want you in this live chat right now. Real deal, I want you in this live because I'm talking to you, real deal. Real deal, I'm talking to you. I told you. I needed to be top scorer. I told you I needed to ball in the final. I told you I needed to score the winning goal in the final. I told you only then will I view you as a legitimate Euro winner. Until now, the narrative lives. You they have not shown up for your national side in a major final. Eder lives. Say his name. Ede lives because if you are a superstar, you are judged by what you do in the biggest game for your team. It's never changed as it will never will. This is HH. This ain't BBC. This is not ESPN. This isn't any side thing. This is real football. I told you. What does the tagline say? The tagline says the home of football analysis. I'm having a drink for Chris. Christian, this drink is for you. This drink is for you. Because this ends, brings an end, Cristiano. It's over. It was a great run. It was a beautiful run, and he had a great career. So this drink is for Chris, this is for the end of Penaldo, the end of Cristiano, the end of hype, the end of our because the end of our battles, because we've we, it's been a great one, and you have been an amazing opponent. You've been a superb, amazing adversary. One of my greatest sworn enemies for a long time. But as much as we've been sworn enemies, we can break bread. And I hope that come sometime down the line, we can put the swords down, put the shields down, and talk. And sit down and talk. Cristiano, this is for you. This game was Portugal's. Let's start there. It was Portugal's. And being the analytical savant that I am, it went exactly as, as I thought. I said, oh my gosh, Belgium. They can't find an, an opening. Lukaku was shot down by Pepe. Portugal, uh, Portugal's defensive shape was perfect. And the game was played exactly how Santos wanted it and exactly how Portugal wanted it. And this showed why this was a bad match for Belgium. Belgium, before that talk shot, didn't sniff Rui Patricio's breath. They didn't sniff his breath. And Portugal were having counterattacks upon counterattacks upon counterattacks. Diogo Jota, let's have a conversation. Diogo Jota, let's have a conversation, bro. Two superb opportunities. And Diogo, this is what you have to understand. This isn't the EPL. This isn't the Papa John's Cup. This isn't Norwich. This isn't Winston Churchill FC. This isn't Lizzie United. This isn't Prince Harriet or whatever. It was, or, 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 Kate Ascot or whatever her, her name is. This, is. this is not that. This is big boy football. You can't miss those chances. In the first half, Diogo Jota, you've got to at least get it on target. You have to at least get it on target. If you're not going to get it on target, 
put it across to one of the greatest goal scorers we've seen. Second half, Cristiano was bowling out. And you could see Cristiano was rolling back this because this guy was dribbling. He was going through his ballots. He knew that the stakes were high. He understood the stakes were high. So he was trying to make things happen. So he was rolling back this because I was worried. I said, wait a minute. Is this 24-year-old Cristiano? What the, this guy's dribbling. This guy's this guy is making things happen. And he had a great put a I don't, I don't know whether it was a pass, but whatever what the ball somehow ended up on Jota's feet of our Cristiano. Jota, you're inside the area. You've got to be able to hit the targets, bro. You've got to at least hit the targets from there. So for me. I think that, you know, for Portugal, I think Jota let the team down. I think Silva has not really shown up that much for most of most of the, these Euros. And for me, I just think that this is what happens in football. Like the, the, but the match, even, even if you, you take Jota's mischance, it was Portugal's. The, the game was Portugal's. They were not being threatened. Defensively, they were cool. They were relaxed. And Belgium couldn't figure out how to get past them. Belgium could not break the lines. Like Lukaku, Hazard, De Bruyne, they were all nullified. They were all completely nullified. And it's my analysis was right in the sense of this team is going to find it very difficult to beat the pragmatism of um, these. It's going to be it's going to be very hard for them. It's going to be di difficult. But you have to know how to react because in football one time you can have control another time you lose control and when the torque hits that shot and you now one zero down portugal you have to react. and let's i will i will keep it real with portugal they reacted well specifically in the second half they reacted well because you look at obviously the the jota chance guerrero that chance that hit the bar the Diaz header. Portugal were putting them under serious pressure. So my thing is, Santos did nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong. Maybe you, maybe Felix should have started or started earlier, but he did nothing wrong because this is just individuals. You didn't make it happen. You see, if team if my team is creating chances i have done the job as a manager i can't go onto the pitch and not put the chances away for the team so once you're creating chances you got to like um jota you you have to put that chance away guerrero unlucky diaz if you had just directed that ball into any of the corners boom boom you can change but it didn't happen um, guys, remember, guys, guys, like and subscribe. If you're in here, guys, it's a celebration, guys. It's a celebration. It's a celebration. Like the video. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. This is the home of football analysis. This is the home of Euro 2020 Champions League, home of analysis. Subscribe and like. Please, guys, like that. Let's get to 400 likes. We've got over 400 dudes in here. Over 400 crack addicts up in this piece. I need you to like this vid. I need you to subscribe. Like, subscribe. Like, so, so, subscribe. But my thing is, once Belgium went to goal up, um, the game 100%, it suited... Um, um, let me see. Once it, the game suited Belgium, hence why Belgium had much more space. Which brings me to... No, but before I, I get to it, you see, we, we actually saw two... We saw um, a bit of Luke Skywalker and we saw a bit of Tim's because there was, because Belgium had great counters because naturally, because Portugal was so desperate to get the equalizer, they were going to open themselves up and open themselves up to a counter. Hence why Belgium would have space. And Hazard was getting that ass. Because once the space opened up for Hazard, he was getting that ass and he was really, really causing some issues on the breakaway. And there were, I think there was one breakaway where I think it was like three on three or even two on two. And all Luke, Lukaku had to do was just maintain your control. Maintain control of the ball and try and, and beat your man. But he screwed up. He screwed up. And it was Tim's because his ball control was wretched. His ball control was wretched. But there, and again, he, he cleaned up his game. And then you saw him try to win fouls, get better control. And really, he held the ball up a lot better towards the end of that half. 
which brings me to Carrasco. I don't think Carrasco can play any more minutes at this Euros. <laughs> I really believe that because maybe because he won the La Liga with Atletico, he donated his brain to, to char charity. So I need someone to tell me in the live chat, what charity organization did Carrasco um, donate his football brain to? Because this man I'm seeing here, he may have a human brain, but I think he he has let's go and relinquish his football brain. It's always like, why wouldn't you bring your football brain to a Euros with you? Which is weird. Because this, this, this dude is, is brainless. This dude is straight brainless. There was an opportunity that this man had. You were in the corner. Either hold the ball up, give the ball back to like a Tillemans or so forth to try to recycle the ball, or give it to what's called a Munier. This guy tried to do like a pirouette and lost the freaking ball. And an opportunity where, where Lukaku gave him the ball, I was like, mate, either try and make space for a shot or wait for Hazard and wait for Hazard on the overlap and I'll give it to a homeboy because there was a guy on the overlap. This dude's decision making is garbage. Like, if I'm Martinez, I'd be like, bro, you, he, he, he can't play. He can't play. Like, this guy's football has been garbage, truck, trash, basement level on the floor. And I thought, my gosh, this guy may have screwed up a Bel Belgium. The amount of because Belgium should have got the second. They should have got the second, but this dude was, was trying to sabotage this freaking guy's man. So all in all, man, um, what a goal. What a goal, man. What a goal. And it's like, okay, so so for, for Portugal, see if you couldn't blame someone for Portugal. <sighs> Here's the thing: you blame. Jota for missing those two chances. You can't miss those two two chances. You can't you, you, you can't miss both, and those are bad chances. But also, you, you you blame Bruno because again, like there was so much fanfare from you, and he literally did nothing. And, and I think you see the only thing Bruno has done in his whole thing was he put in a pretty good cross for Andre Silva, and and, that, and that's it. A pretty good cross because really Portugal's best player throughout this entire Euros has been Renato Sanchez, a guy who wasn't a a starter. Who was pretty much on the periphery because so much focus was on Bruno. Their best player has been Renato Sanchez. So, yeah, it's difficult to really think of who to, to, to really blame them. But as I said again, man, what's a flipping G? What's a flipping G, man? Um, all right, let's let's see, see what you guys are saying, man. Um, so from Kule Axel says HH Juju is unmatched. Look. There was no juju. There was no juju there, man. Relax. There was no juju. Okay. I no, honestly, yes, I really believed that Portugal were gonna win. Trust me, it wasn't juju. I I know people won't believe in anything, but it was unlike like let's keep it real. Before Hazard's goal, who was the stronger team? Which team was most likely to win before the hazard goal? It was Portugal. They were they had the better chances. They were the guys that were more threatening in the attack. And you couldn't see where the Belgium goal was going to come from. So hence why this is such a big victory for Belgium, because this is the kind of game that this is the kind of game that Belgium would lose. It's the kind of game that Belgium would lose because it was so early similar to France. But unlike 2018, when they, they couldn't find the, the, the goal, and which is why you need someone to step up. When the game is tight, you can't create a chance. You need someone to step up. And Kule, I couldn't believe that of all the people to step up it was your boy the torque man from shane schubert's man coca-cola are popping bottles hey, so shane schubert says that coca-cola are popping bottles man see you later penaldo <laughs> see you later man see you later yeah yeah, yeah. no no coca i got popping bottles man um Look, I think for Cristiano, man, um, yeah, I think this is it, you know. Um, if I was um, advising Cristiano, retire. Retire. You, your, your legacy is intact. You've done everything at club level. You helped your team to reach a Euro final, um, which you didn't play in. Your legacy is set. You, and you've broken so many records and so forth. Your legacy is set. 
and you can retire a, a happy man. You know, you can retire a happy man. Because again, I just think the unfortunate thing for Christian is that okay, you never were able to really play for your nation in a major final. That is just the bitter disappointment, you know, because that's obviously why what he missed in 2016, that's it, you helped them, but you did, like there's one thing, it is very important to be, to be there for your team in a final and to really be the defining factor in the final, because that is what really, really defines you. You know, look, Zidane was there for his team Euro 2000. You saw what freaking Iniesta did in the World Cup and in the Euro final. So I told you, like, so guys like the Iniestas, the Zidans, the R9s, and the Maradonas, these dudes are different. These dudes are different because you have to show up for your country in a final. So for thingy, amazing legacy, amazing player, I think you should retire. Whimsical thoughts. <laughs> hope. So whimsical thoughts is a hope. You should have popped a Coke bottle. I don't clean Coke. See, but you know what? That would have been, you see, if let's say I knew they would have lost, that would, that would have been a scene. It just as I have not drink, I've not drank Coke in ages, man, and I'm I'm, I'm like anti Coke, but that would have been a scene. That would have been a scene. If if I, if I just popped up with like a, a Coke just down the Coke, that would have been a scene. That would have been a scene. But maybe I will do it afterwards. Maybe I will do it on the gram. Um, from Zuateng TV, man, thank you for the job. Zuateng TV says, Ajax CL run was fraudulent. <laughs> Delict, um. Van der Beek, ZH are bricks. Tadic is Southampton reject. Onana is a cheater. Frankie is a past merchant. Lowland frauds. Um, no, I disagree. I understand that people are emotional after what happens to Netherlands and so forth, but no, I will not agree that um, I actually see a run was fraudulent. No, no, no. It was deserved. And they, no, they fumbled the bag in that game. So, what happened to Delict and so forth? It is what it is. It happens. Mistakes happen, but you can't just take what's happened with Delict and so forth. And look, Frankie, whatever happened to ne ne Netherlands, Frankie had a superb tournament. He was flipping amazing. Delict was pretty good. He just he just he just made a mistake, and everybody makes a mistake. You can't just do that to say, "Oh, this guy's now trash." From Paul Kickling, amazing goal today by Eden Hazard. H H Paul. Come on. Okay, you, you you didn't have to say that. An amazing goal by the Torque. Okay, and I'm sure as the big brother, he'll be happy because look me, he doesn't score that goal without the hazard gene. So because he has the Zad gene in him, it was the Zad gene in him that inspired him to score that gene. So as I said again, look, he is no longer baby hazard. Like with that goal, he's like my view on him has changed. How I view him, how I see him has completely and utterly changed. And things can change off one goal. I told you, I am not a consistency merchant man. I am a big game, big moments merchant man. And this guy showed up in a big game. And for that, I've got to give him the freaking dog. I have to give, I have to give him the, 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 the freaking dog, man. So um, from real deal, <laughs> real deal, thank you. I'm here. Jota and Bruno is trash. World Cup next. Real deal. If you have a clear line to Cristiano, because Cristiano has not been taking my, my calls. If you have a clear line to Cristiano, I am begging you, please advise him. Retire. You don't need to show up for the World Cup. It's fine. Just retire. Just retire. Pack it in. Pack in your boots. And just call it a night. Just call it a night and just say, I've done, I've finished. You know, like I told you, you know, it would have been nice if he led Portugal to a Euro final. It would have been nice if he played in a Euro final, but it is. It doesn't happen to everyone. Um, Bruno, yeah, Br Bruno had a. I kept telling United fans that those stats that Bruno have, they are very suspect. Those are very suspect stats. And because he so fills the eye test, I was like, man, should Portugal be really putting so much of their faith in this Bruno dude? Jota, man, you can't miss those. You, you cannot miss those those chances. You cannot, you cannot, cannot, cannot miss those chances, man. You know, those are just too, they are too golden. They are way, they're way too golden. And from your boy, Shan Shergill. Thank you for the dub. Shan Shergill. 
HH, Kane World Cup 2018 or Cristiano Euros 2020? Um, if you ask me some, to me as to who is the better, is this who is the better player? Um, I would say Cristiano Euros 2020. What's, I think what Cristiano did in the second half was, because, because put, put it this way, like the goal he scored against Hong Hungary from open play, that was a good goal. That was a really good goal. And the, um, um, and in the second half, he played well. Second half, it was like, oh, this is like good old Christian. Like, first half was, but once times became desperate, and he realized, okay, I now have to play to really affect it, he, he, he began to ball. So, um, Cristiano Euros 2020 over Kane World 2018. Martin Rosario says, the real Zad scored to today, LL Harris food. I know, I know. Look, man, I get it. I get it. Like, look, <laughs> Zad, that name is trademarked. There can only be one Zad. And that's they see. The talk doesn't have to be called Zad. He's called the talk. He has a nickname. So once you have a nickname, you've now entered into that stratosphere of aha, proper respectability. So he can now coin and make his own name. But guys, we cannot lie to ourselves and say that Eden did not ball in that second half. Let because see, I know you, I know you hate me, and I know you want to clown me and so forth. You cannot tell me that Eden did not ball in that second half in terms of his dribbling, his first touch, his movement, evading people, getting past people, meandering his balance, the, the, his wrist and the ball. You cannot tell me that he wasn't looking good in that second half. But as I said again, that goal from Torgan was a huge goal. It was a huge goal. And I could, see, my thing is like, there is nothing. See, goal of the tournament is still Modric. That is still the best goal. That's the second best goal. Because the issue with that was it was a swerve. So I thought, okay, but did it hit someone? Did it really get someone? Because I thought it did hit Diaz's thigh. But it was a swerve. So you could see Patricio go for it. But Patricio went for the dive. He just swerved away into the corner. So it was a beautiful strike. So he must have hit that thing right in the perfect spot. <laughs> Amazing. From Jaden Alvarado, man. Thank you for the job. He says, if Jao Felix started and Renato Sanchez stayed, Portugal would have got the equalizer. Santos's faith in... Um, Santos's faith in... Jota and Bernardo Silva was misplaced. And I had been calling from Jaff Flux. Basically, all the guys that Santos put his faith in, Bruno, Jota, uh, Silva, all flopped. Santos was always on the bench for, for two games, so he had to pretty much bring him in, 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 into the game. When Jaff Felix was playing, he already showed more than Bruno or Silva have shown in all of the games that they were in there. So I think if he has started with Felix and Sanchez, who are ballers and have better footballing brains and are far more creative and they are, they are far more dangerous, we better see the issue with Bernardo Silva is every time he received the ball, he just goes sideways, sideways, sideways. So even for Jota as well, when he receives the ball, they're not really that, they're not very dangerous, you know. You know, like that's why Sanchez was so key because he would go straight and really go at you and attack. So you need the guys to really attack straight. Because my thing is for Portugal, the fact that you're not able to score against this Belgian de defense who had their mailing in there, you've got to just say that you drop the ball. You've got to say that you guys drop the ball, man. Um, but um, but look, man, you see. The, why I'm happy is, guys, we have a great quarterfinal. We have a great quarterfinal because Belgium, Italy, see, Belgium, Italy, oh my God, man. That's, guys, that's a quarterfinal. That is a quarterfinal, man. And the thing about it is, if I was, if I was advising Italy, you can't play like you played against Austria. Because if Italy play like if Italy had the same approach that they had against Austria, Belgium beat them. Now, obviously, we now have to see what De Bruyne is because De Bruyne limits us. So 
what is De Bruyne's injury status? What is Hazard's injury status? Because if Carrasco plays all, Italy can win 5 0. You know, Car- 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 Carrasco is enough to um, completely make Belgium self de- de- destruct. But if Belgium have their guys fit for that game, Italy have to switch to Catanazio. They have to. Because you now, because you've seen Belgium, if you defend deep and don't give them space, they find it difficult to break it down. And like this, it, and it has to, you see, Belgium didn't cut open Portugal. It's required a wonder goal, a superb, amazing wonder goal for them to say what's up. So, Italy, I'm advising you right now, man, Italians, I'm advising you right now, man, do not, I repeat, do not, I repeat, do not, do not, do not um, um, open yourselves up to Belgium. Because what they want is for you guys to open themselves up, man. But guys, I like Italy, Belgium, that is a, that's a game, man. That's a game. That's a game. Um, all right, what, what, let's, let's, let's take this guys up. Um, from Abdul. Um, Abdul says, NASA, that is the space agency, they never landed on the moon, by the way. They never landed on the moon. So Abdul says, NASA busy recovering balls tonight. Thanks, Bruno. You see, United fans, all because a player plays for you doesn't mean that you have to be um, biased. Yes, you can love your club, but you can still have football objectivity. Bruno Fernandes had a disaster class this whole tournament. He was a major, major disappointment. And let's think about this. So Jao Felix, I think he was he was injured for the second game. Okay, if he starts in the third game, if Jao Felix starts in this game, what happens? You know, and um, because for me, Jao Felix is easily the better player. Bruno Fernandes. I think he is a system merchant and he only works in particular systems. He literally did not help Portugal in any way. And you have to say that for the amount of hype that he had and the numbers he had within the season, I see, and see, see, numbers lie. Numbers can lie. Just based on the numbers he had and so forth, we can't just assume that, oh my God, he's going to come in and, and, and ball, man. But Portugal needed Bruno to be creative. And that is and that's the issue. Bruno, your role is you are the creator. You are the brains behind everything. Because here's the thing, though, is that Renato Sanchez is a great attacking midfielder. But Renato Sanchez is not necessarily a creator. And when you just look at Bruno's numbers, you are thinking that, my gosh, Jota, Silva, Cristiano. Because Cristiano is like, oh, my gosh, I am here to finish. So Cristiano shouldn't be because see Cristiano shouldn't be creating for Jota. It should be Bruno who should be getting the ball and putting in a ball for Cristiano. Because if you give Cristiano a clear chance, he's going to score. So people can clown Cristiano and so forth. How much did Bruno provide for him? How many clear court chances did they give to him? That's the issue. Martin Rosario says hmm, Mourinho at Portugal is needed. Hashtag World Cup. Personally, for me, if Mourinho is hired as Portugal manager for the World Cup, that would be incredible. It's not, it won't because he's a Roman manager, but my dream is seeing Mourinho manage Portugal. That would just be flipping out, out, amazing, man. And, and, and it's a great crew. They have a really great group. Um, but Santos won't want to win. See, now, here's the thing. Do you sack Santos? I don't, I mean... It's a difficult one, man. But see, see, because see, I see if it's me, Santos has done great for Portugal in terms of the Euro 2016. But based on the talents that, that these guys have and the amount of players that they have, I feel that you need a different approach. Like they did what they did. But with Diaz here, Bruno, Jao Felix, um, Danilo, Jota, all these kind of kind of guys coming in through, you probably need a different dude. You probably need a different even what's it called? Um Liao, the guy from Milan. I think you maybe need a much more attacking offensive man- manager to take them in a, in, a, in a different route, man. But 
For me, for the laughs, Mourinho at a World Cup would be hilarious. That would be flipping hilarious, man. Um, from Yassi Said, man, Yassi Said, Jota and Bernardo Silva played against Portugal. Yet Bruno came on the pitch with Felix, changed the game, and Bruno gets abused. Yes, yeah, we are talking about the whole of the Euros. Now, Bruno's best performance was here. But as Abdul just, just said, Nasser are saying what's up to the balls that he, he blazed over the bar. Like, there's one opportunity that he had where, like, you need, you, you need a, a goal here. If you're going to shoot, you best be sure that you get it on, on target. If you're not 200% sure you're not, going to, you're not going to get that shot on target, bro, time is running out. Move, move the ball out wider and get it into the box or try and put a through ball into, into the box. Don't just go for a shot, especially if you now go for a shot and it now goes over, over, over the bar. So the Bruno criticism is his tournament. Like, he has to say, he came in as a starter and he eventually got benched, rightfully so, by Renato Sanchez. So the reality is, great season for Man United, but a disaster class for Portugal. That's just being real. Um... LSK Laxon says, Kalma, Kalma. See you in 2022. Hashtag winter's coming. YSK, YSK. I am begging Christiana. I am pleading and I am begging with him. Please, please, Christiana, I am begging you. Can you just retire? I am begging you. Please retire. Please retire. I'm begging you. Please retire. Chainsaw DH, thank you for the dub, says, Pep Klopp made Jota. Okay, okay, Pep and Klopp made Jota, Bernardo, and Ruben overrated. We need to have a discussion. Because I was say, if you're a system merchant, it doesn't mean you're a bad player. You can still be an amazing player, but still be a system merchant. It just, it just means that you need a particular environment to, to thrive. You can't, as a player, go and thrive in multiple other areas. So I still think Diaz, Ruben Diaz, is still a pretty good de de defender. But for Silva and for Jota, you see, for, for Jota, it's, you, you have to put away those opportunities. You have to put those away. Um, but I, you see, my, I think the biggest disappointment is Bruno because he was the guy that came in with so much hype. You know, and okay, so my thing is this is that okay, you can only blame Ruben Diaz for the Germany game where okay, he got exposed in that Germany game. Did he get okay? Was Ruben Diaz to blame for the um goal today? No, that was just an amazing goal, <laughs> an absolutely fantastic goal where nobody's to blame. That. That's just a wonder, wonder, amazing strike. So, um, but yeah, man, look, it's it's see, I said at the start that Santos, the biggest problem for Santos would be um, picking the right team. Picking the, the right team. Because you have so much talent, which is a, a good thing. But the difficult thing is that, will you pick the right lineup? And I think Santos would not look back and say, mm, did I pick the right lineup in all of these games? Did I pick the right approach? Did I pick the right players? Um, from Steph Antoniades says, so now, Italy or Belgium? If Italy played the way they played against Austria and that approach, Belgium will win. If Italy switched to Catanazio, um, it could go to penalties. But Belgium are strong, strong favourites. My fear is Austria had a lot of opportunities against Italy. If those opportunities land to Lukaku, the Torg, Zad, KDB, it could, it, it, it could, it could be lights out. So it's that match is dependent on what Italy's approach is. Um, from Dwex, thank you for the old Dwex. Dwex says, bye bye Ronaldo and Bruno diving cheats. Look, for Cristiano and Bruno, it's it is bye bye. It is bye bye. You know, um, defending champions, you would have felt that they could have maybe done a bit more to really defend their, their title. Hence why. You've you've got the, you. They have to feel just disappointed, you know. Um, and I think because because here's the thing. That's just why it's like I was I was I was I was, I was, I was warning Cristiano. If 
Portugal had equalized with him diving to win a penalty, that would have been messed up. That would have been messed up. But I think the issue with Portugal is you they just didn't have enough creativity. They just did not have enough creativity. And like when they were now a goal down and they um um once when they, they went to a goal down and then they now have to now create something. Like they had their chances, but the team is definitely lacking creativity and lacking that individual that, that can try and make something happen, man. So yeah, man, it is goodbye. It is a bye-bye. And yeah, it is bye-bye for, for Cristiano and the Euros because yeah, I don't think we'll see him. Unless this guy comes and with gray hair at age 43 or 44, which would be ridiculous. It is the end for, for, for Cristiano, man. From yes side again, he says, yes, yes, says, if Bruno is a system merchant, are you saying Ole got the best out of him? Are you saying Ole is actually a top-class manager? Um, Ole is not a top-class manager. I'm just saying that um, he fits Ole's system. I will never, ever, ever call Ole a top-class manager because, yes, I'm never putting Ole in the same category as a Pep Klopp, Mourinho, Flick, and so forth. But Bruno just fits the system that Ole has. And also as well, it's who he's playing against. And also as well, club football and international football are two totally different beasts. And what we're now seeing is maybe Bruno isn't caught for international football. Now, he'll have another chance at the World Cup. But for these Euros, he's been disappointing. And it happens. There are guys who can be good and money at, at club football. And the guys who are just trash internationally because Bruno was trash he was trash and you even had your your man Mourinho said that look Portugal are playing with 10 men because Bruno is doing nothing you know he literally was contributing nothing to, to this see which is why it's funny because 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 Gatlock asked me this on the on the Twitch stream what is worse Carrasco or Bruno Bruno who does nothing or Carrasco who does something but what he does is trash it's it's weird, like it's weird, but at least Carrasco, at least you're doing something. You're messing up, but at least you're doing. You know what? Carrasco is the lesser of the two evils because at least you're doing something. Bruno, you're not doing anything. And um, from Tyrone Lorenzo Valentio, thank you for the dub. So Tyrone says, Penado's biggest highlight in the Euros was moving the bottle. Nice PR stunt for the fraud. Will guys rate him if stats didn't exist for one game? You see, Tyrone, I love Christian. And I always want to be respectful and kind to Mr. Christian. I always want to be respectful and kind because I think it is good to be respectful and kind. Um, but what people need to understand is that this man is fraudulent. He stats pads and i think that a man who over celebrates after scoring penalties is problematic a man who desperately tries to win win penalties to score penalties so he can break his own personal records is problematic a guy who is only worried about his individual achievements and what he looks like individually so that he can now get in ballon d'Or is problematic hence why with this loss, Cristiano has now officially been taken off of the Ballon d'Or roster. So right now, if Messi does what he can do in the Copa America, so Messi is still alive. But Cristiano, right now, he's off the like he's he's not you can't even put him top three right now. Like so, he basically he has zero chance of winning that Ballon d'Or. Um, but Messi still has a chance, and Kante still has a chance. You know, because I said that for Ballon d'Or, we have to have to see how the Euros go. Because if Portugal won the Euros and Cristiano was top scorer. He'd probably win it. But as of right now, he's out of it. You know, but I keep saying with Cristiano that this guy he is a stats pattern. and in for in for for the sake of football integrity, for the sake for the sanctity of what we call this beautiful sport of football, we cannot promote stats patterns. That is just simply wrong. From LSK Laxton, who says cycles, this might as well be a reaction channel. YSK Jackson. You were saying, Sue, see, Sue, sir. And you promised me, you promised me that um, 
You promised me that Cristiano would say what's up. But he didn't. So it's not reactionary. It's reality. It is simple reality, bro. Simple reality. Um, from Shane Schuberman. Thank you for the dub, Shane. Shane says, United fans, he used your club as a nursery and bolted. So, who is, so, are you referring to Runo? He used your club as a nursery. God damn, and bolted. Is this Mourinho or is, or, or is it Bruno Shane? Who is this player that, you, that, you, that you're, you're referring to? If you're referring to Bruno, um, I mean, well. You could argue that okay, he 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 used he used United to um pump up the stat sheets. Light was that he was a world class player, and United fans trying to convince me that Bruno was United fans. Remember, United fans kept telling me uh, the receipts are on Twitter. United fans promised me that Bruno was world class. You told me what he was world class. Doesn't show up in a Europa League final. Drops a disaster class at a European Championships. But he's world class because he bowls against um, Queen, Queen Elizabeth United, man. That's madness, man. Um, from YSK Jackson says, it's as if I'm on a United fan channel. Hashtag rent free. YSK Jackson, worry about trying to sign Sancho. Worry about trying to get Rashford to actually control a football pro properly. Worry about your team, and I'll worry about the UCL winners, okay? Let me worry about UCL winners, you worry about your team. From Mohammed, thank you for the dub. Mohammed says, Torgan showed up and proved he is the real hazard. The fat fraud Eden, Hash, has been surpassed by his own brother. Look. <sighs> Look, if Eden didn't drop a masterclass in that second half, I would have had to agree. You know, if Eden didn't ball and completely lubricate Portugal in that second half, then I would have had to come out and say, all right, you know, you're, you're right that Togan he has surpassed Eden. So it's so fortunate that Eden totally balled and put up a man of the match. Like really, Eden was my man of the match. So it was, it, was a, it was key that he put up a man of the match performance in that second half and put on a clinic, you know. But as I said again, for Torgan, that is a huge goal. Like, that is something that's okay. You have to now say, you know what? And I didn't think he had it in him. Because remember, I've been seeing this guy for Dortmund and so forth. I'm like, eh, he's okay. Yeah, he then on, 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 and so forth. So there was nothing that I saw of Torgan that would have made me believe that this guy could have come in and produced a shot like that. A G like that. And I told you, Togan, you have my, my you have my respect. You have my respect. You are called the Tog. You have my respect. But guys, no look. Um, Togan, thank you. Togan, you saved football. You saved football. You know you did your Thanos. You brought balance and integrity back to football because I told you, man. I don't know what I would have done if Cristiano had penalty his way to, to these U U Euros, you know, because I would have found a way. I would have tried to find a way, you know, and, and my plea is this, is that, you know, like for Cristiano, when you go out like that, take care of your body. You have to take care of your body, take care of yourself. I just think that the right thing for him to do is retire. Call it a day. Like, look, the World Cup is, the World Cup is in winter. Who wants to play in winter? Okay. Nobody wants to play in, in winter here. Okay, so call it a night, chill out, and just, and just go through. Um, so, I mean, look, man, I mean, guys, it's, it's, um, the golden generation lives. And I think this is what, obviously, what I think, um, your boy Red Devil was referring to, which is in the sense of, this golden generation of Belgium, this very special group of, of players, I still believe that 2018 was their boat. But here's the thing. Belgium, you may have to run into France yet again. You may have to run into the French 
yet again. Um, because if if see, see my thing is, is if they beat Italy, and I for me, Italy that game could go either way because Italy have see Italy, I think see Italy have individual see Italy have like a key as a who can cause some, some issues, so they could still do something. But my thing is. I'm I'm still not sure whether Belgium can beat France if they meet France in the semi in the in the, in the semis. Again, that's a big if. Because guys, there is there's still a lot a lot of football that still needs to, 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 to be to be played. Still a lot of football that, that still needs to be played because what we've now seen now, we can't assume anything. We can't assume uh, France beats Switzerland. We can't assume France will beat either Croatia or, or, or Spain. We can never ever assume these things. Anything, and I mean anything, can happen. Um, in these beautiful sports that we call football, man. Anything can happen, man. Um, but Torg, man, you're you're a, you're a, you're a big boy now. You are now in the big leagues now. Um, you you now have to be respected because to score a goal like that to win a game, it's big time. Like it's it takes. It takes some balls and it takes some skill to score a goal like that to defeat um, um, a Portuguese man. So, guys, man, look, man, we have the hangouts coming up in about 20 minutes' time. So, join in and so forth. But to end this, man, <laughs> Cristiano, 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 you thought... You really believed you were going to win these Euros. <laughs> <laughs> you really thought I would allow you to win these Euros. Cristiano, I'm sorry. You are never, ever, ever showing up for your country in a major final. Because it's me. It's me. But did you really think... I, I, I was like, See, that's what I would want to ask Christiana. Did you really think I was going to allow you to win these Euros? Did you really think so? Come on, bro. But Eden Hazard, you showed up. Belgium's defense, you held firm. Togan Hazard, you are a big boy. You should be respected. You deserve the respect. Drinks are on you. But the job isn't done yet. Belgium... As one of the favorites and as a highest ranked team, the goal is for you to win this trophy. I don't think you're going to win the, win the trophy, but tougher test lie ahead. Next top is Italy in what I think is going to be a fantastic quarterfinal, guys. Peace out, stay true, and one love. Bye.